Hello. Make sure I've got everything set up here. So first thing we're going to do, hi, this is a just a reminder Balron lesson for for Rowan and for anybody else who's just kind of getting started. First thing we do is get the drum sounding the way we want it to sound because sound is what we do. That drum sounded ever so slightly just a little soggy to me. So the very first thing we do is get it sounding. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, um, first things first. Feet flat on the floor, right? You gotta have that. Next thing is you're holding the drum, but it's more like balancing. It's I've got it against my ribs, but I'm not touching the drum with my body, so I'm not muting it, right? Notice that it's also basically just about 90 degrees to you, so it's 90 degrees to me, right? So the drum's not like this, the drum's not like that, the drum is basically like this. There could be some differences depending on style, and maybe you play with your leg out like that. So I've got my leg here, so maybe if your leg is out like that a little bit, that might, that might be a perfectly good place for you to play but not like this. So basically from here, moving out. But your goal is to find an angle where when you're using the tipper, you've got an even stroke where the angle is the same from both sides, right? And that's depending on your body and the length of your arms and hands, there might be some slight differences. Now you want notice the stick, the tipper, if you will, is about 45 degrees to the drum. Now here's that other detail. You don't want to be swinging like this. By that I mean coming all the way out here, right? Notice how it's hand, no, notice how loose it is in my hands. I'm not holding it like the way I'd hold a pencil if I were writing, right? Like this. So when you hold a pencil this way because it gives you control with your fingers. So you put, you put it out here and you, you're, you're using your fingers as well as your wrist. Now notice I'm not using much of my elbow. Okay. Also notice my wrist is pretty straight. My wrist is not like this. Okay. My wrist is pretty straight. Now you can have it a little bent, but Basically, you want that to be happening here, and you don't want huge swings because you want to be able to get these nice little fast triplets and other details that if you're out here, you have a lot of movement. So the basic goal right now is just a nice, easy stroke, and you want it to sound the up and the down stroke to sound the same. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And once you've got those sounding the same, then you want them to sound different. Right? So you can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that that's that difference in sound is coming from speed. I'm not so much hitting hitting the drum harder as I'm moving the tipper faster, which of course means that I'm hitting it harder. But it's not with strength. Well, not like hey, hey. it's more speed. That gives you touch and subtlety. And then one, then one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, and try one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can just have a little bit of fun with just a straight up and down beat, moving the big beat. So let's go from one, two, three, four, like even, to emphasizing the first beat. Now we're going to emphasize the second beat. Which is the upstroke. Now we'll try the th try the third. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 
three, four. Now we're going to go to the fourth beat. One, two, three, four. And that'll give you just kind of a basic. Once you've got control of that and control of which, where's the big beat, and the hard part there, the challenge, is have the up and down strokes be where you want them. So if you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it's on the down stroke. And if you're doing it on the two, the up is going to be the harder one, the louder, faster. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm going to go back to something I talked about at the beginning, which is I'm not so much holding the drum as balancing it, but ever so slightly, right? My hand can be like this, where I'm not using it to hold. The arm is holding here, the body very lightly here. So if I were to squeeze right now, I lose, I lose the drum. So that's how lightly I'm actually holding. The only time I start to squeeze is if, if I've got my hand on the drum head and I want to tighten. And at that, when I'm doing that, I'm actually pushing pretty hard because I've got leverage here, all right? So you're looking for holding the drum very lightly, um, similar in a sense to the way you're holding the tipper. Nothing when you're holding a musical instrument should be tight. If you're going to do this, you're going to be doing it for hours and hours and hours, day after day after day after day after day. And that just doesn't work if things are tight. Things need to be nice and easy. All right. So that's what you're working on for today. Just basic holding the drum having a nice loose hand, and I'll give you one last recommendation. Um, it can be really useful to rehearse this, what we're talking about right now, in front of a mirror. And notice how far away my hand is from the drum. The tendency is to be here. And notice what happens to my wrist. It starts to bend, right? So if your wrist is bending, you're probably too close to the drum. There's times to be close to the drum, but for now, when you're just getting started, you want to be, you want to be out here and nice and tight. Okay. When I say tight, I mean these little short strokes. And later on, you can have this issue of being out here and then coming in. All right. That's it for today. And we'll see you um, in a couple of weeks, I guess.